This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and today I'd like to talk a little bit about color management without getting into too much of the details because this would otherwise become a really long uh, drawn out video. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about CMYK color space. Uh, CMY color space basically is, is a subtractive color model used in color printing. And if you've ever tried to have a document that you created with Inkscape printed professionally, chances are the print shop got back to you and said, hey, this is an RGB, I need this to be in CMYK, otherwise the colors will look muddy. And the reason for that being is that RGB is really intended for the web or anything with uh, a digital, sp digital display. So, you know, for designing things like websites, um, you know, headers, buttons, graphics like that, maybe Facebook covers or social media graphics. That's what RGB is good for. But when you're designing anything with print, you're going to want to use CMYK. And Inkscape's main drawback, in my opinion, is the fact that it doesn't allow you to work in the CMYK color space, nor does it allow you to export or save a file within the CMYK, CMYK color space. So whenever I'm doing anything for print, I won't even bother with Inkscape. I'll just go straight to Illustrator and do what I have to do. But however, there is a way to produce a CMYK document with Inkscape, and it's rather simple, and I'm gonna go over it with you today. Um, all you'll need is a program called Scribus. So if you're using Ubuntu like I am, you just go to your software center and search for uh, Scribus. And you'll see it right here. This is a desktop publishing uh, program. Just go ahead and install that. And then afterwards, I'm going to show you how you can do this with Inkscape. Because I know a lot of you have asked me about this. I know a lot of you have posted comments on my blog and on my Facebook page uh, asking what you can do with CMYK with Inkscape. Because, you know, some of you, a lot of you use Linux and you don't have the option of booting up a Windows partition and opening up Illustrator CC like I do. So, um, what I'm going to show you today is an alternative to, the, uh, to that. It's not exactly perfect. I mean, it's, it's actually far from perfect, but it is an option. I'm going to show you how you can produce a vector CMYK document using Inkscape. So, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this and I'm going to open up an Inkscape, Inkscape document. And I'm just gonna design. I'm just gonna whip something together real quick here. This is not. Um, this is not meant to be a design tutorial. I'm just gonna maybe create a couple of circles. I'm gonna bring the opacity on them up. Let me zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna use colors that typically don't translate very well to CMYK. It's usually like neon colors. I'm gonna use like a neon blue. I'll duplicate that, put that down there, and I'll duplicate that, put that down there. I'm going to use a neon blue, a neon green. Shades that are really far out there on the RGB spectrum usually do not translate very well to CMYK. So I'm going to use this just to show you an example. And what I don't like about Inkscape is that it doesn't allow you to work in the CMY color space. I know that there's a CMYK tab here, but that's not quite the same thing. It won't give you CMYK values and it won't limit you to that spectrum. I know that there's a way to do this by installing, uh, downloading and installing um, ICC color profiles and linking them up to Inkscape through the document properties tab and I tried that however it still didn't work the way I liked it didn't allow me to actually work create and build within the CMY color space all it let all it pretty much did was it took the color of something and changed it to its CMYK alternative which is not what I wanted I want like I can with Illustrator to actually work within that space but we can do that with Scribus, so that's what I'm going to show you here. So let me just group these all together. I'm going to convert them to a path first, and then I'm going to group them together. Let me set up the document so that it's the same size as this graphic. I'll resize, resize page to drawing or selection. And I'm just going to save this to my desktop. And I'm just going to save this as CMYK and click Save. Now let's uh, minimize this. And there's my document right there. Now I'm going to go and open up Scribus. Just type in Scribus. There it is right there. And on this very opening window right here, I'm going to choose Open Existing Document. 
And from the file types, we want to, we want to make sure you choose an SVG, scalable vector graphic, because that's what I saved that file as. I saved it as uh, cmyk.svg. Choose that. Let's go to the desktop. That's where I saved it, right there. Uh, you get these these uh, these strange warning errors sometimes with Scribus, but they're not always relevant or you know even meaningful. I mean, you just click OK and then everything works fine. So here's our document that we created in Inkscape. Now let's change these colors from RGB to CMYK. Let's go to um, Edit and let's go down to Colors. And it's going to list here all the colors that we have used in this document. Let's click on Remove Unused. Let's get rid of that. And let's click on each of these three colors right here. We got the blue one right here. We'll click on that. And we'll go to Edit. And from this drop down right here, Color Model, we're going to click this drop down and go up to CMYK. And you'll see what happens here. Here's the old color. Here's the new color. It'll, you'll see what happens to it when I click that. It's going to give it a slightly muddier like almost like a more dull shade of it which this actually is not that bad I mean it's not as bad as I as it, I thought it would maybe I picked the wrong shade but I'm just gonna run with that I'm gonna click OK the green one this is where you'll see a big difference because it's very very hard to get a CMYK value for a, a neon green like this you usually have to start with yellow and add a splash of green and a splash of cyan in there uh, I'm gonna change this to CMYK and here's what it did with that. It made that really muddy and uh, you know, just like a really dull shade. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little more yellow. Now you could actually, this whole, this whole space right here, this is the CMYK color space. You can actually work within this CMYK. Because this is what I wanted with Inkscape, but it, it just doesn't allow you to do that. And as you can see, it's kind of hard to really get that, that, uh, that bright green shade. I guess we'll have to go with a close alternative, maybe something like that. I mean, if you could play with this, or you could play around with this for a little while. You, I'm pretty sure you can get a pretty close shade. But I'm just going to run with that for now, and then we'll use our magenta here. What happens when we change that to CMYK? Oh wow, that almost turns red. So I'm going to lighten this up a little bit. Maybe um. Yeah, you see, that's not quite what I want, but. It's pretty close. I'll, I'll just run with that for now. And then we'll go ahead and click OK. And those are now CMYK values. This is now be recognized by a print shop as a CMYK uh, file. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and show you now. I'm going to go to File and Export. And we're going to have to export this as a PDF. Otherwise, we won't be able to save it as a CMYK document. Then again, I could be wrong. I don't know too much about, Scri about Scribus yet. I don't really use this method myself. Um, I just use Illustrator, but a lot of you have been asking me about this, so I looked into it a little further. So, save as PDF. Let's go to co the Color tab, and for the output intended for, let's click on uh, Printer. And that's going to save it as a CMYK uh, document. Go ahead and save that. It's going gonna, it's gonna, to... Uh... And here we have this document we just created, CMYK.PDF. Let me open this up a little bit. I'm a little little too zoomed in there. Now this is an editable vector uh, format. Even though it's a PDF, this can be opened with Inkscape, it could be opened with Illustrator. I tried it myself. I actually took one of these files and then I loaded it up on my uh, Windows machine and opened it with Illustrator and Illustrator recognized this as a CMYK document. So that's how I know it works. And I was also able to edit, edit it that way as well. So I'm going to show you right now, we can even edit this with Inkscape. I, do, whatever you do, if you're trying to get a CMYK file, don't edit it with Inkscape afterwards because it's going to change it right back to RGB. Even if you don't have RGB values in there, the document's still going to be registered as a CMYK somehow because that's RGB is all that Inkscape knows. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this uh, with Inkscape. Just click OK. Let me zoom in on this a little bit. And if I'll go to the Edit Paths by Nodes, this is a PDF document that we just created. I'm opening it with Inkscape, and if I'm using the Edit Paths by Nodes tool to show you as I hover the cursor over each shape, it's highlighting the path around it. So it is indeed recognized as a vector file. So you're just gonna have to, if you want to edit this further, you just have to ungroup it a bunch of times. You have to click this like I think like eight times or something like that, and then we get these individual little files here. 
And I could show you even that this is indeed a vector graphic. I could just do a difference with that. I could play with these nodes. I could do this, do that. And that's pretty much it. So that's pretty much just to show you that this is indeed a CMYK document and it is a scalable vector because you can edit it with Inkscape and Illustrator. So that's one really um, simple way to go about getting a CMYK document using Inkscape and Scribus if you don't have access to better alternatives like Illustrator or CorelDRAW. So I hope that's been some kind of help. And if you have any questions, just leave me a comment and I'll be glad to help you out. And as always, thank you for watching.